Um, Ma'am, can I start? Uh, yes, good afternoon to everyone. So uh, we'll just start. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, madam. You yes, are audible. Plus your PPT is also visible, Manjula. You can go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Um, okay. So thank you for this opportunity. So okay, the okay. topic what is given to me for uh, today's session, uh, trends in pedagogy and assessment. So we all know that uh, since we are teacher educators, uh, the main thing what we go here is the output is our students should learn something out of it. So we all know the definitions of learning, but still, what is learning? Uh, when we say it is learning, um, very simple way we can say it's the process of acquiring knowledge, not only the knowledge, but also the skills. And a very important is a behavioral change which we want uh, in our students through the process of this teaching learning process. And even a very important to say about this is, it is the ability to take in how much they have got ability to learn out of it and also apply this new information into our day-to-day -day life situation. And it may be with respect to the behavior or it may be with respect to the thought or it may be with respect to action. Uh, and also we know that learning, you know, it takes place consciously as well as unconsciously. Maybe, you know, it is very much essential for our personal growth, adaptation and development. Uh, the main thing what I would like to say here is, now if you connect this to the present day learning, all these definitions we all know, but when we apply this to this 21st century, every student, including us, it is a process, learning becomes a process of unlearn and relearn. This is very important. So unless we unlearn the things, we cannot learn a new concept. Otherwise it is something like pouring everything into a box. That shouldn't happen. So this should be the process of unlearn and relearn. Then only I think we can fit into this system. Then the question comes like, how to enhance learning among students? I just want even you people to use your chat box. Like what all we have done so far as a teacher educator to make our students to learn or to enhance learning. You could use your chat box you can use our keywords that is sufficient. Kindly use it so that we make our, uh, you know, like um, session more interactive. Yes. Okay. Um, right. Then. Anything else? Yeah, we use ICT, Saroja Mam. Yeah, we make it participative learning. It makes more interactive, true. So here we can make it even in a different way. Like one is um, active participation. As somebody said, participative learning. It, when we say it is active participation, the first and the foremost is it should not be mere chalk and talk. Always the learning should engage them in discussion and some practical application should be there. And also the very important is the problem solving. Whatever we learn today, it should be applied into their day-to-day -day life situation. The another important is visualization. Uh, let me give you an example when we speak with respect to visual visualization. Um, can anybody take, you know, use your chat box and tell me what is the span of uh, nowadays ad? How much time the uh, ad is coming? Earlier, how much time it used to take? Yes. You can just use a number. See, we all used to, uh, you know, um, used to hear that ad, washing powder nirma. Earlier, the whole song used to come. But now, what is the span of that ad? Any ad you take, exactly. It is only 30 seconds. Why 30 seconds, not even one minute? It is because the span of attention of the students is very, very less. 
So when the span of attention of the students is so less, then how we should visualize and make our learning more enhanced. So for that, use any diagram or chart, but it should be very appealing and also it should reinforce their understanding. The another important is practice and repetition. So here very importantly is that uh, our students should revisit whenever it is required. I'm using this particular word because it is connected to, to for a today's topic. Because unless the child revisit, unless the child apply the learned concept, the learning will not take place. It is just, you know, it never gets imprinted in the mind of students. Um, let me connect these two with one beautiful analogy where I'll be giving when I go with blended learning. So the same thing here again is teaching others. And even we have got varied learning approaches where we have got why we need to use this varied learning approaches because in our class, we have got a different types of students. That is, we need to cater to the different learning styles of students where they have it. One is auditory, visual, kinesthetic, and you know, even verbal. So here, when I say this, a uh, very important is that mm -hmm. what type of learners are there in my class? How should I do it? Now, could anybody tell me, like where do this visual type of learners sit in your class? Yes. Usually, whoever is visual type of learners, we have seen, you know, basically, yeah, exactly. In the front, that in the, they are the front benchers. Absolutely true. What about this audio type of learners or auditory type of learners? They prefer sitting in the third or fourth bench. You could observe they are multitasking. And they do, you know, they seem to listen to your class, but exactly they'll be engaging in some of the work. And here, very importantly, is that we need to cater our learning approach, whatever we are using, we should make feasible in such a way that all type of learners are engaged in my class. And the other one is the kinesthetic, where we could see that uh, those students prefer sitting in the last bench, even though they listen to your class, meanwhile, they do the different work also. So whatever the approach you are using, it should cater to all the type of learners, especially the different learning styles which they have. It. The another one, a very important for today is the feedback. So always let's go with constructive feedback where it redefines or it refines or it upskills. Two things need to bear. One should be upskilling. So this upskilling and redefining is very important. So for that, we need to make sure how it has to be enhanced. So now I have a question here is what are the recent trends? I have kept on mom's table. Yeah, principal mom's table, it is there. While mom was taking the class, I've just, uh, say mom, I have kept, I think something I have placed on. I'm sorry. Uh, so here, uh, what are the recent trends we have got in this um, 21st century. Now everybody expect a uh, personalized learning. That means, you know, it should be customized. It should be tailor made. It should be the education, whatever you are giving, it should meet their needs. So very importantly, any child could give you the information just like this. So the very important is that we need to make sure how we tailor these uh, education or the concepts to the students. And very important of today's topic is a blended learning. So where we combine two things. One is the traditional, uh, as well as, you know, online components, we do use it so that we make our class more interesting. The another one is a flipped classroom, where even the students learn the material at home through online resources and apply that knowledge in the classroom with the help of the teacher. The another one is inquiry-based learning, where we could see that uh, encouraging the student to ask questions, we make sure that they investigate the answer through the research and critical thinking. So this is what we could see today. And now I'll go to the, uh, which is very important. We all know that a new pedagogy is emerging. 
where we speak about AI, but I don't go with AI. But here for this, you could see that online learning is a contributing factor. Without this, I think today's learning is not going at all. Today's teaching is also not going at all. So for this, I have a question with all of you. I Let's go with the discussion type. Like what may be the new demands of this knowledge-based society, according to you? What may be the demands of this knowledge-based society? Because we could see that there is a knowledge explosion everywhere. You know, today chat GPT has come. Tomorrow we have one more. We have got a big list of AI. So in spite of that, you know, like our pedagogy is very important where we need to combine with that and go about. So here, what is that knowledge-based society is expecting from us? That means from teachers. Yes? You can unmute yourself and also you can speak or we can go using the chat box. Hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. What may be the demands of this knowledge-based society? Effective skills. Okay. Then. Apart from that, no barriers. Information. Absolutely. Madam, to this society, as yes. a society is uh, uh, information-based society and knowledge-based society, yes, sir. the information is not required by the teacher. Yes. Yes, madam. Uh, development of skill and development of uh, thinking Correct. and development okay. of concepts are required. Yes, Not sir. just giving information. Exactly. So I have a few things which have uh, listed out keeping our uh, you know students of 21st century. Uh, it is something like this. Like the very important is that they want to continue development of knowledge. Like for example, like they want to see that how it goes, how they can make sure that they learn everything within a short span of time. So continuing development of new knowledge, making it difficult to compress all the students need to know within that short span of time. That is something, a new demand, how you are going to reach them within no time. The second one is that, as Sir mentioned, applying the knowledge, information you are getting everywhere. But how do you apply that to meet the demands of this 21st century society, like skill development. It is not only, you know, like the first one is your cognitive, it is not your affective, it is not only the psychomotor. Apart from that, even the soft skills are very important. Like critical thinking, the students need to think, why, why I need to apply this knowledge? How I need to apply? Then what is the outcome I get it? So that is something. And the very important is that independent learning. Today, the main focus is independent learning. The child need to have this. Otherwise, learning cannot take place. Tell how you can spoon feed a child. So for that, we need to use a proper information technology, which is, you know, having a proper software and data with proper discipline. And also, you know, we can develop this entrepreneurialism. Otherwise, it is highly impossible. This is the demand of knowledge-based society. So that's why they say that, you know, whatever the education you are giving us today, how we could apply that to our day-to-day -day life. When I learn something, it may be a quadratic equation, or it may be, you know, my 5E model, or it may be constructivism. How could I make my students more having this social based value so here such skills need to be developed that is something important which is a great demand of our knowledge based society apart from that even i think you do agree with me like soon after their graduation the learning will never stop because it's a lifelong learning where it is given based on the expectation of the development which is taking place so that it should have an impact on the future of work. So now the question comes, how about our syllabus? How about our teaching methodology? Are we able to cater to it? That's a big question mark, which we are having today. 
when we see all this, this may be the knowledge based society demand, but what may be the demand of this student? Okay, a new student of this society's expectation. So here, when I say that, yeah, wisdom, correct. So here, when I say that, uh, the first student expectation when you go here, uh, he need student demography is getting changed because here more mature students you are getting, more students, they combine the work and study. They are working and also they are studying and also they look for flexible learning option. They say, mom, could you just do this way so that I can? See, I think all of us, we are having this. Like even though you give them a proper notes or anything, they say that, could we concise this much more so that how much is required is sufficient so that we can score the marks. When you say three pages, even they may cut short that for two pages with all the relevant points. So that is how the new student demography is coming up. And another important thing is that today's children, they are in the world where technology has become a natural part. It, earlier, it was something like a luxury. Yes, that person knows well, but now it has become a basic. It is the need, need of the art. So how our teaching need to be there? So for that, very importantly, we need to blunt. We need to make sure that we blunt both our traditional teaching as well as the component of technology so that in that particular subject or in that particular area, we can meet the expectation of the 21st century learner. So that's one of the reasons where we could see blended learning has grown up at par. And you know, like they're coming out with the flipped classroom approach. You take wherever, everywhere it has been introduced now. Now exactly what is this blended learning then? So when you take the pedagogy of today's, I've got three here. One is blended learning, project-based learning and personalized learning. But I don't go for the other two, but I just go with blended learning. So earlier, um, student how they used to train. The sages used to train just through word of mouth. They used to train them through word of mouth where everything was verbally taught. There was no writing part. But over a period of time, we started using technology. So we started using online platform. We started using online resources and making our class more interactive by enabling them more time. That means giving them a flexibility of time. Not only time, they could learn at their own pace, at their own place of learning. So that is what the blended, the blend. You have blended both the technology and your teaching method, then, you know, make it more feasible for the students at their convenient time and at their convenient place. So that was more relevant and it was the need of the hour of this 21st century. Now, when we take this blended learning, we have got all this. All this falls in the plate of this blended learning approach. One is there is a flipped classroom, and you could see, we call that as a hybrid learning, where we integrate the technology, even the student could access the technology, even it meets the assessment standard, even students are engaged, we provide online materials to them, there is option for interactive opportunities, and it enhances the personalized learning as one-to-one, face-to-face -to -face it's happening, at their convenient places, even they could access accessibility is there content development could be done easily and the only thing is that you need to have this infrastructure set up and a training of teachers when all this is done beautifully this blended learning approach could be applied in our classroom then what exactly is a blended learning so we all know that this Blended learning is something where we call it as a classroom-based teaching, which is supplemented by technology. So 
you could say that we could use n number of technological resources or it may be online resources or even the present AI. You could use even AI and very important is learning management system or LMS and also the digital resources. And you even you can make it as fully online teaching also if the course is provided online. So the blend of both our traditional teaching where we are incorporating our technology becomes our blended learning. Now, uh, we could see that uh, there is a close inter integration of classroom and online teaching. We are, we are not new to this because we have done this while there was pandemic. And most of us, the students and teachers, they were coming to the uh, schools and colleges in a very short uh, group or in a, in a small number and they were doing it. So much of this went with the blended as well as hybrid classroom or a hybrid learning where the classroom time is reduced but not completely eliminated and even some time is given for online learning. Uh, when we go with this blended learning, uh, there are a few uh, definitions where we could use it. One is it refers to the integration of technology and digital media into the traditional learning method. Whatever we are doing, we try to blend it. You may have a thing. Mom, uh, you know, like using PPT could be done. Not only the PPT, but you could use a different online resources, technology-based resources, and make your classroom more interactive and educational experience you could provide to your students. For example, I'm teaching a lesson, something based on um, gender equality, or it may be gender discrimination. So I could provide if my student is um, using this online platform to listen to my class, and if at all he need to add some points, then I could incorporate such online tools such as insert.org. Wherever he finds the doubt, if I use that particular tool, web tool or the uh, technology resources, I could highlight the question, I could highlight the important points, I could highlight even the, you know, uh, the references what I have used it, all those things. And the student can also answer and question there and then to me. So even such online resources could be used. That is, uh, it is very simple. It is insert.org if you use it, where the whole thing, whatever the uh, slides you have prepared, you can highlight, highlight it where it comes with, uh, if you're using the yellow color, it is very important. And if you are using a uh, pink or different colors where you could give all those things and make your students to be interactive in your class. Even the teacher will be getting to know that the student is participating and even the same thing is being done. So even that could be done in very beautifully in the blended learning approach. And if you go further, uh, what are the components of this blended learning approach? Um, basically, we go with two things. One is face-to-face -face instruction. The another one is online platform. So when I say it is, uh, you know, face-to-face and try instruction where there is a direct interaction with the teachers and the fellow mates or the peers for the group discussion and the activity. That means we are within the class where we use this, where we have a session, where we discuss the points and activities is being conducted. When I say it is an online platform where it is learned through LMS, and using online tools. There are many online tools. Maybe you could use the quizzes or you know, even they could uh, write a paragraph and where you could freeze it after some time. Yes, this is a time given. After that, they could not submit it. Okay, so even that could be done where you could set the timing. So you could even set the time till this time. You can just make sure that the assignments are open to you. And later, once you upload it, after this time, it will not take. So that could be done very beautifully in our blended learning approach. Then, if you go further, how to create this 
blended learning uh, approach, the very first and foremost, whenever you are applying this approach, make sure like how we do in our traditional uh, classes, we identify or we mark the learning objectives. So here, either, either you can say what is the learning objective or the learning indicators. That is something important. Like what is that I need to achieve at the end of the day after my class has been done? So here, the very first, as a teacher, as a teacher educator, let's identify, let's chalk out the specific learning goals and the outcomes which we are, we are supposed to achieve. So let's make a note of it. Once it is being done, choose appropriate online tools. What is that you are using? What digital resources you are using? Whether you are using a Google Classroom, whether you are using, uh, you know, LMS, or you are using AI, whether you are using, there are many AI tools. Are are you using that? Are you are using something else? Are you are using a team? What exactly you are using? Make sure that so that. It would be very easy for the delivery of the content and the interaction where it could take place. And another important thing is design and engaging content. This is something very important. Here, the content should not be. Now the PPT, whatever I do, I could share it. But you could not interact here. But when I make it that even the student who is listening to this online, there and then, if he is able to interact, it is absolutely a clear blended learning approach. Otherwise, it is only an ICT-based lesson it would become. So here, for that, you need to have such multimedia. You need to curate the multimedia so that in person or it may be, you know, offline, he could, uh, or it may be online, he could access it. So that all types of students, I mean to say auditory, I mean to say visual, I mean to say kinesthetic. So those people could also make sure it becomes easy for them. And we could cater to the different learning styles, as I mentioned right now. So here, that way, the content need to be designed. For that, a little more time definitely takes. But the only thing, we need to be more techno-savvy. Yeah. Then it could be easy. For that, a very important is that training is required. So once, um, I think today, all videos are available on YouTube where we could make sure that we could incorporate. The moment you say you can just, within a second, now the PPTs are getting ready. The only thing is that how to incorporate those online tools where you could use it, where you could use uh, through Udmi and different uh, this thing, where there are many such online tools where we could apply. I'll be giving you the list in the last where we could use for our uh, blended learning approach. Once my assessment, uh, the second session gets over, because there we have got n number where we could be using it. Uh, the best, the next thing is that uh, very important. Uh, here is you need to establish a schedule. Like when we say it is a schedule, like when and how, at what time they need to, and when you are going to put it across. So that is something very very important. So a clear schedule of outline need to be prepared and need to be presented to the students so that they could access it properly so that we can provide a balanced learning experience. So without that, if you just give it, it becomes, you know, of no use because we have seen students where they have just put it on a mute or they have put on the listening mode and, you know, they have just done or today's children are so smart where they put it for screen recording because all uh, you know like um, uh, mobiles or it may be the laptops they have got the screen recording where they just put it for screen recording and they learn at their own time so better we establish a schedule where it helps them and another one as i said the training and the support is very very important see when we say you use it uh, the first and the foremost is that we need to provide guidance. We need to train the teachers. When the training of the teachers is done, then definitely you could see like this becomes a you know well structured 
uh, pedagogy for the teacher educators and also our teachers. So that very beautifully they could do it. Today, everywhere they say that you take the support of technology and make your class uh, more lively. They could use it so that for that purpose, even today we could see that in most of the schools, uh, they hardly use the smart board, hardly use the computer. Even the teachers hardly they use it. So, but the only thing is that give them a proper training, give them a proper support. And I say it is a support, it is infrastructure support. That support is very, very much required so that you can make your classroom more lively and engaging. Uh, the another one is access and adjust. So here, uh, a very important thing is that uh, we need to monitor the effectiveness of this blended learning. Like how it is being taken and how it is being done. Uh, that is something we need to do it. Otherwise, it becomes difficult. Then, uh, the another thing is that like So I just thought I'll uh, show you a simple uh, lesson where it is for 60 minutes, like how we can have it. So this lesson where uh, simple, just I have just made a, a one slide of it. Uh, this lesson introduces a student to the basic concepts uh, in environmental science, where they focus on ecosystem and biodiversity. So why science? Because you could give n number of, uh, you know, uh, knowledge to them and also experience that. You can show them a different types of ecosystem, uh, biodiversity. So if it is designed through blended learning, then combining in-person instruction with the online resources. So the time would you take it here is uh, 60 minutes. In person, it is 30 minutes. Online, it is 30 minutes. With that, you can plan it so that the whole lesson comes out very well. And uh, how to go about? See, in person, when you're giving uh, the introduction of that to the topic, or it may be the relevancy of that, uh, you need to give it yeah. what for you're doing and how do you do it. And a brief lecture on ecosystem and its biodiversity. And even here, we are going to have question and answer as well as a classroom discussion. But when you do it this online, so here, here we are asking a question and answer. But when you are having this blended learning, you need to assign a reading to them. Where, as I said, you can use that insert.org where you could highlight this. You need to read on this understanding ecosystem. This is something very important where they need to do it. When they read that, they'll be understanding what is the relevancy of that topic, why they need to do it. And keeping that, here you're going to have an interactive quiz where a platform is created, where they do it. Not, not necessarily only a quiz. Even you can have a concept mapping. You could ask them to map it or you can have even a mind mapping or you even you can have the other modes of assessment where you could ask them even to create their own articles or the zest of it, or it may be, you know, giving a keywords, ask them to establish the whole thing to understand their comprehension. So that could be done on the online platform itself, where through the quiz or different ways. The another one where you can have a virtual discussion that is taking the real life of example. So here, all that could be done, like where all we could see this ecosystem and, and how to go about where the digital resources, such as when I say a virtual uh, discussion, you could use, uh, you can give them some video footage or ask them to go through it, read that or uh, observe that and connect with what is being said. And audio recording, you can just provide them audio clippings, listen to it, and even they can answer the questions. Or it may be you can connect that to the blocks. There are many blocks where related to ecosystem, you can connect it. Even that could be done 
and even you could connect them to certain websites where the self-study or what we call it as an independent learning or you know a study habit could be developed and even there are various online forums where you can take them like open resources uh, oer all those things you could uh, ask them to you could give a link it's all again a link it is not simply you mention it instead you are going to give a hyperlink once they click on that they it will connect to that particular thing what you are supposed to uh, you you want them to do it because uh, that is something very important. Unless the student get that, they are not able to do it. So here, that need to be given to the students so that, you know, the students will have a comprehensive understanding about this ecosystem. Uh, even though the online component is 30 minutes, but here, whatever you people have provided, maybe the link, the online article, maybe, you know, the quizzes or the videos or it may be the audio clippings or it may be the blogs or it may be you know online certain forum or it may be any chat rooms or it may be any search engines you might have given all those things will help the child to have a better understanding than having only the traditional method and another important uh, here you could see that why we need to use this particular online component more? The only thing, it could be accessed anywhere, anytime, as per the convenience of the user. So he could, even though he is traveling, he could read it, he could access it, and he can have a better understanding. So here, uh, you could see that there may be, with that, he may have a better options to uh, Google it, or browse it, or surf it, and get the answer. So. Uh, this could be done, this could be incorporated in the lesson so that they will have a better understanding what exactly we need to do it. And another important thing, what we need to keep it in mind here is that when we use this open educational resources, see that uh, definitely we'll be using it here. So always make sure you're going to uh, tell the student that this has been given, uh, the knowledge is given free here using this but always better to acknowledge it. Uh, what exactly you're using, how you are using, that need to be taken care. So what are the drives you're using? All those need to be set. There are few things where it is having a copyright and there are few which is an open content. So that need to be mentioned very clearly. So it is not something we take it from someone without acknowledging it. So in that case, make sure we'll use it uh, when we, whenever we are using this online component, we use this open content instead of using which is having this uh, copyright because if at all you are going to publish it online somewhere because now we have got slide shares, we have got different modes where we could publish it. So at that time, tomorrow we should not land up in some other problem. So always better we use open content where uh, definitely it supports the policies and uh, we don't have any barriers to use it. So that thing, again, whenever we are using, we need to mention it because the student may also will be not knowing whether he or she need to use it properly. And that is very important. And another thing, like how it is, what are the uses of it? One second, I'll just, uh, one second. I'll get back with one. It's just a minute. Um, okay. So here, uh, the another important thing, what we need to keep in mind when we are using this uh, uh, blended learning. Am I audible? Yes, Am I audible? Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes, madam. Audible. 
Okay, thank you. So in this uh, blended learning, whenever we are implementing, always we need to have the student support and also we need to have the continuous evaluation. Like why this continuous evaluation, let me tell you. See, when you have a clear objectives, when you have set already the objectives, like what are the goals, what are the outcomes of each learning mode when we are using, uh, we need to provide such resources for the students so that they navigate all those components. Once they navigate, once they go through all that, a uh, very important is evaluation. Make sure or let's make sure that we do a regular assessment. As I said, uh, through online mode, there are different modes to do it, but still a regular assessment where it helps the students to do by himself. So it may be through physical or it may be through digital environment that we need to do it. So that is something. And is there any challenges or consideration where we need to keep in mind while we implement this uh, blended learning? Um, could anybody uh, tell me, is there any challenge when we are so much exposed uh, to this um, blended learning. One way or the other way, we are blending it. Maybe in a different uh, bits we are giving to the students. Do we have any challenges? Do you feel still, uh, you know, we are in that uh, crawling stage where we are not able to uh, implement this? Special skills are needed uh, yes. for teacher. Huh. And uh, individualized learning is you know, once again a problem. It's a challenge. Individualized learning, mom, I feel like when you are giving them all the support at their own pace, at their own, um, you know, convenient time, they could do it. And the only thing is that um, marking their needs, like what exactly is expected, maybe not given. Uh, but I think to some extent, we could meet their expectations. And assessment, okay. uh, uh, yes, madam. Assessment. Individualized. Yeah, individualized yeah, yeah. assessment is a great challenge. Absolutely, ma'am. Yeah, what that's, you said is that's great. what, ma'am. Uh, uh, so here, you know, maybe the quiz or whatever you are, we are using, definitely the student will do it. But here, how far the student has done by himself? Because when I had just uh, talked to a few of my, um, you know, uh, friends, um, not exactly in my learning uh, this thing, so there I could see like uh, the students were helped by their parents keeping, you know, the notebook in front of them and they have written. Uh, so that can also happen even here where they Google it and they write the correct answer. So uh, what mom said, I do agree with you. Any other things teachers, where definitely we have a challenge? Teachers, students ratio is very important. Mom, could you be kindly be a little louder? Teachers and students ratio. Um, that would not be affecting because either offline or online, we could connect it. But assessment is very tough. Assessment is a great challenge. I do agree. That's what there is a different type of assessment uh, where I'll be taking out in the next session where we'll go with that, where that could help us to um, tackle this problem. And that's what I feel. Any other things, ma'am? From the point of us, from the point of teachers, or it may be from the point of, you know, um, the one who is implementing. Now, the great challenge is technology integration. Even though Madam, in a, taking the, Madam, taking yes, the sir. use of online part in a traditional classroom. Exactly, sir. Is a, is a challenge. Exactly, sir. So that is something I expected answer. So here we could see like a very important, the first challenge is including technology integration. The another one, what sir said is equitable access. I'll put it as equitable access, like providing equal access of all the technology and resources for all the students. No matter we say that, like we are doing it, but how far we're able to do it. Do you think that support is there in your, uh, you know, what is that, whatever the, um, mode you are using. Maybe you are using your Android or you may be using your laptop or you may be using your desktop or the person is using a tab. If that is not there, then it's of no use. I use a very higher version and my student is not having that, then it's of no use. The another important is uh, educator training. This is something important where we say that the 
training need to be given, a professional development opportunities need to be provided for all the teachers. So they adopt to the digital teaching. I don't use the word ICT. I don't use the word using PowerPoint. See, now you could see in most of the platform, they ask, apart from PPT, are your teachers using something else? Have they used LMS? Are they switch over to the digital teaching? Are they using the blended learning? So for that, that training is very important. Unless you train them, unless we are get trained, I think it is not possible. Then, um, could we suggest any best practices for blended learning? Like, yes, this could be done in this way. Uh, madam, uh, one suggestion, ready. madam. Yes, sir, please. Uh, uh, madam, uh, uh, to a traditional classroom teacher. Sir, could you be a little louder? Madam, in a traditional classroom, uh, what happens yes, in order to make the uh, learning blended? Yes. One challenge is there. Uh, yes, sir. The challenge is well, mm -hmm. uh, to teach a particular concept. Yes, after sir. giving uh, ideas in the traditional classroom, mm -hmm. after finishing what is to be done uh, in the classroom, Regular classroom, before going to yes. online, then yes, what sir. is to be encashed from the online huh. is very important. So that the idea should be there to a classroom teacher. That's what, sir. That training need to be given. Like how I yes, should for every, switch sir, over this to is it. better to This mm -hmm. is better to make a list of uh, ideas to be encashed from the online for every concept is a better it is one uh, uh, idea tip to uh, yes, in, uh, practice this yes madam uh, uh, shankar sir that's why i just yes. i mentioned whenever we are go yes, going with online teaching let's connect them with you know this uh, blog which blog i'm using what online yes, platform i'm using what which online article which is to the level of the student that is something. All those need to be done. So for this, that's why I'm connecting with the challenges. So here, uh, it is very easy for me to say we could use a blended learning. But when we're using it, a lots of homework need to be done from the part of the teacher. Like she need to be well-versed with all those resources. She should study well in advance. Like whether this article, this blog, is it suitable for the student of, it may be a secondary school student, or it may be a B8 student, or it may be any other student. Is it to their level? Is it to their, uh, are they getting a sufficient knowledge in this? So here, the teacher, as you said, sir, we need to make a big list. First, a list need to be ready, what online resources and what I'm going to share with them and how much it has been. That's why I said, Please, we could also use this insert.org where everywhere we could highlight it. And, you know, we could make sure, yes, the student will get it. So that could be done. Thank you, sir. And even the another thing uh, as uh, um, uh, we could implement, ma'am, that, that's not the thing. The only thing here is that you need to share it through proper, you know, either you can take them or through link you could implement. But when you implement it, it should be always in a module type, in a proper module where the connectivity is given, where the hyperlinks are given there and then, where the child can access it. So that needs to be done. Otherwise, uh, it is not at all worth where it is having utter flop show. And um, here, I think, Mom, I uh, you know cleared your uh, this thing. The another important thing is there any best practice? Or you, you can say that we could uh, successfully implement this blended learning in our classes. Could we do that? Since now we are all of us are into this technology, we know to some extent, I don't say 100%. Now, whatever we were knowing, it has become outdated. Now, as I said, everything, it has gone. Google Classroom, yes, ma'am, I said already. Google Classroom, LMS, you could use it. Everything, we could use it. Team, you could use it. Everything, yes, ma'am. So here, uh, I think all this we have implemented in our uh, regular this thing uh, during pandemic. But still here, whenever we are having, there should be certain takeaways. There should be certain, you know, things. First is, as a teacher, we should make sure that our students get adopted to it. 
uh, if you just give earlier also it had in ICT something called as you know um, um, where we have just made them to learn um, giving them certain slide which we call it as a programmed instruction where the child can go back and come back but not here it is much more advanced to it where we want them to learn by themselves so the blended learning will help them to become more adoptive where it aligns with the needs of this 21st century learners, where you could enhance their engaging part and also prepare the students for the digital future. Because now almost everything goes going with digital mode. So here the first and the foremost is that they need to know how to adopt. The another one is uh, preparation. So here, uh, the other word what we can use here is either the preparation or you are creating the awareness and you're training them. That is something important where you equip the students with digital literacy. Let me use the word as a digital literacy and also the proficiency in the technology tools. They need to be more proficient. How do we go about? Uh, so that is something very, very important where we go with that. And if you go further, like, uh, is there any uh, particular uh, take? I hope you're see, able to see the screen. Yes? No, madam. Only one. Uh, yes. Okay. So what are the benefits of this, um, you know, blended learning? One is definitely it personalizes the learning. And, you know, it may be self-paced and it can cater to the different needs. The another one is flexibility at their convenient at their this thing, they could do it. But the only thing here, earlier I said schedule, you need to fix the schedule. So if you freeze it, they cannot. If you don't unfreeze it, then they can do it. And access to the resources where you can provide them a wide range of digital resources, tools, multimedia content, so that uh, I don't say that, you know, a teacher need to be replaced, but to some some extent we could modify or we could enhance our traditional instruction. Uh, the technology should never replace a teacher, but using technology, the teacher can become much more competent to meet the needs of this 21st century learners. The another important thing here is collaboration. So this is something where you could facilitate the collaborative interactive learning experiences where you enable the students to work together maybe in person or it may be through online you expect them to do it there and then say there are a few engineering colleges where now they have come out with uh, this thing even it may be an old one but now it has uh, you know uh, in most of the engineering colleges they are doing it uh, the teaching is going there and then and immediately a link is sent where they have to complete that assignment there and then using their tabs or it may be, you know, um, uh, laptops. And they, they have collaborated both in person and online. Uh, recently, there was a video, I think it was a viral, where, um, you know, the um, person was speaking and it could not be translated to the different language. But the digital tool made, made them so accessible that they could use it within no time and access what he's saying. And also they could respond it with the same thing. So here the same thing could be done even in the classroom where uh, you could make sure the needs of the children can be met to some extent. The another important of today, that is the 21st century is the fourth R, that is internet. Three R's we all know reading, writing and, you know, um, arithmetic, but the fourth R is much more important. That is the internet. That The other way I put it as digital literacy. Unless we make sure our children and we have this digital literacy, I think the basic skill of this 21st century could not be met. One is the critical thinking, the other one is the problem solving. These two are very, very important. So that this skill development, that's why I put it as an upskill. Always we need to upskill ourselves with what we know. So unless we have this digital literacy, I think we cannot go ahead. So that is required. And another one is optimization of the instruction what we are giving. Blend the best aspect of face-to-face -face teaching 
with the advantages of online learning. Already mom said, mom, we could not meet the individual differences. I do agree. But still, how much you are able to give in this, please give it so that the students can take a much in this. So that is something very much required because there are so many different online platforms where beautifully we could collaborate and go ahead. So that could be done. And another thing, uh, uh, this I told you, what is the way forward from this particular session? So one is definitely we have the barriers to creativity where it could not be done and innovation must be overcome here. And the second one is that um, even I take the point what mom said, like, you know, um, we could not cater to the individual needs, but could we do an entry test? Could we do this KWL chart and make sure what my student require? When I do that, I think that barrier could be overcome. When we use this, yeah, in actual classroom, definitely we are doing it. Um, the only thing is that if the students wants it online, if the student is absent and at that time you want to do it, yes, you could do it. The only thing, the infrastructure need to be very supportive mark. Otherwise, it's not possible. Uh, it's so easy to say, but still when you apply it, it comes out. Uh, the only thing, a proper support system, infrastructure support system with everything is there, you could apply that in your classroom. And um, I was just telling something uh, like here, uh, KWL chart. So in order to meet the demands of this, let's have this KWL chart. Like what my student want to know, what he has learned in that class and how he's going to apply. Uh, so that if I if we do it, so I'll be having an idea like what exactly my students require. Keeping that in mind, I can just prepare my lesson. Like what he know exactly already. That is what with W, what I know. The second one, what I wanted to know. Like, as I said, with the fingertips, the knowledge is what we want to know that we need to, and what he learned out of this class. So if we prepare a KWL chart, again, through online, you could make it online platform and give it to the students. If they just make a note of it, and if they give us, Keeping that in mind, even the individual differences can also be met. Uh, that could be done here. And another thing, uh, students must be provided opportunities to experiment and also reflect in all the subject areas. Uh, we could easily do it in science and maths, but still it could be done even in other subjects also, maybe social science languages, especially they could do it where, uh, you know, um, teaching of this phonetics could be done beautifully. So we have many digital platforms, uh, online platforms where we could provide any number of uh, you know, opportunities for the students to learn a language. And another way forward in this is respecting the diversity of ideas and nurturing them. That is uh, you know, a tough time for the teachers where you have to create such uh, atmosphere where they need to do it. And uh, another one here is um, encouraging the flexibility in the classroom process. So this need to be taken care. Uh, otherwise, as I said, if you freeze it, they cannot go about. So always there need to be um, flexibility where you have to provide such flexibility, then only uh, the students can access it and do it. So when we do it, I think it is very easy for us to apply that in our classroom. And provision of incentives and awards to motivate the teacher to do continuously better. In most of the schools nowadays, they say that everything should be put it online. You should use smart board. You should use blended learning. So in most of the schools, if you take the international schools, uh, we have one school by name, Canadian School of International, uh, where in all the classes, it is blended learning because the student need not to come to the school regularly. So they say that that flexibility is given, like as this imam said that, um, you know, like, is it possible in the actual classroom? Yes, there in the Canadian School of International, they are doing it. Um, so I have seen where the English teacher has used this, uh, but the only thing is that the length of the class was one and a half hour. 
it is 90 minutes where it is too taxing for the teacher as well as for the student. So the student could learn at his own pace, but to record it, you need to have a proper, uh, you know, like um, um, resources, uh, infrastructure, otherwise, no, the clarity would not be given. Uh, but there they have got everything where beautifully everything is recorded and the student uh, could access it. And also, you know, like the link will be given. So that is there. And even uh, it is there at Indus International in one of the school at Bangalore, um, where uh, both the teaching is going um, hand in hand because uh, the student may not attend the classes. So at that time, this blended learning is helping them. So this is how they are implemented and they are going about. And I'll just um, uh, you know connect to a small video. I think you people can um, see that. Not audible, no. It's not audible? Yes, ma'am. Not yes, audible. Ma yes, ma'am. Not audible. One second, one second. Yes, ma'am. How about now? No, ma'am. Uh, is it audible? No, no, no. Oh, no. I'll just check. When I have kept for hundred percent, how about now? No, madam. How about now? No, ma'am. It's not audible. I'll just check it, uh, or I'll share the link in the next class. I think we could do it in the next session. Um, so, one second. Now we can hear, but not clearly. There is a Maybe I have just, I'll mute.
Okay. Uh, this is uh, just a snippet of how exactly blended learning works. So um, with this, I'll just conclude my class and uh, session. And we'll just get back to you. I think, uh, may I know what's the break time here? What ma'am said is 3.15.